Coming up. My name is Jill Duggar. I can't believe little Jilly Muffy is now getting married and going to start a family of her own. Where did the time go? I blinked, and here we are. From the time our daughters are small, we've really prayed that the Lord would bring the one he has for them in his timing. I think I'm in love with somebody I've never met. Jill. Good to see you. I can't believe you're here. When he was growing up, I never thought that he would marry into a family with 19 kids. Would you marry me? Yes, totally. Jill is deserting our buddy team <laughs> and starting a new one. Vanessa hosted a bridal shower for me. I am so proud to be sending our bride off to marriage. She sent out invites to a bunch of the mamas that I helped with their prenatal care, their births. So she's sitting on the couch, and these moms are all putting their babies in there. We are only one week away from giving Jill away to Derek. This is the story of my family. We're the Duggars. That's me. I'm Michelle. There's Jim Bob, my wonderful husband, and our children. Josh is our oldest. He married Anna, and they have our first grandchildren, Mackenzie, Michael, and Marcus. Then there's Jana, John David, Jill, Jessa, Ginger, Joseph, Josiah, Joy Anna, Jedediah, Jeremiah, Jason, James, Justin, Jackson, Johanna, Jennifer, Jordan, and our youngest daughter, Josie. If you lost count, that's a grand total of 19, and I delivered every one of them. Of course, with this many kids, we do things a little differently than most families. It isn't always easy, but somehow we make it all work. I'm engaged to Derek Dillard, and at this point, I am super excited. I can't wait for the wedding day to get here. Vanessa is one of my wedding coordinators for the wedding. Vanessa hosted a bridal shower for me. She sent out invites to a bunch of the mamas that I helped with their prenatal care, their births. Over the past couple years, Jill has been studying midwifery, and then I've been assisting and helping doing doula work. And so we've been to a number of births together and just learning the whole birth process. Vanessa has put on this beautiful brunch for Jill and all of her mothers that she has enjoyed helping with their labor and delivery. When Jill announced that she was getting married, we had lots of calls from our moms and, and our families that we have served saying they're so excited and if Jill was going to have a shower. And so we just decided to just make a brunch for all the mamas to come. I can't believe that Jill's about ready to walk down the aisle. I just, it seems like yesterday she was little and now here she's all grown up. It's kind of surreal. I mean, I'm joyful and I'm happy, but it's like, where did the time go? It just, I blinked, and here we are. Lots of little babies, huh? Thank you so much, ladies, for coming. You all are a symbol of what Jill has been doing for the last few years and what she's been working for. And so I am so proud to be sending our bride off to marriage and to start her own family. In the front, we have a picture that's going up in Jill's house, and it will have everybody's fingerprints. So we want to make sure that your thumb or fingerprint is on the painting. Write your name next to it, and then babies. It was so cute because on this painting, there was these two little lovebirds in the center representing Jill and Derek. Should I put mine right in between the lovebirds? <laughs> I can put it right in between them because I'm still the chaperone right now, you know? There we go. But I decided to put it next to Jill's little birdie there instead. There's going to be a lot of changes going on in our family, but we are so excited for Jill and her starting off with Derek and just it's going to be neat to see what the Lord does with Jill and Derek over the next few years. Jill's birthday is May 17th of 91. And Jill was my first all natural delivery. Well, we had no idea after our fourth baby, Jill, came along that we would have 19 children. When Michelle and I found out we were expecting 
the fourth child, we were thrilled. And then we found out it was a little girl, and we couldn't be happier. They gave us two boys and two girls. Michelle and I really had our hands full with Josh, who was a toddler, and then we had Jan and John, twins, who were like double trouble. And then Jill came along, and she really was the perfect child. She was somebody that was always compliant. She didn't cry a lot. She just always had a big smile on her face. She was so sweet, the sweetest, easiest baby ever. I think if we'd have had her first, we'd have thought, we've got this having babies and parenting figured out. She was the perfect baby. I am three years older than Jill. Growing up, I mean, I, I just really don't remember her really ever doing anything wrong. She's like a little angel. When Jill and I were younger, we did a lot of stuff together. We were best buddies. I guess she and I were the two oldest girls, and then there was Josh and John. So Josh and John did a lot of stuff together. Jill and I did a lot together. Early on, I think I was more like a tag-along sister to Josh, Jana, and John. I always wanted to be with them, and I kind of fit in as a, almost like a triplet to Jana and John. Josh would come up with ideas, and we'd follow along. My name is Jill Duggar. Our law resource for today, we're going to be going through learning about bankruptcy laws. So growing up, we were homeschooled. And it really, I think, made us, as brothers and sisters, best friends in a lot of ways. And so when we would do things together and doing activities, I can remember Jill being the one that would you know, kind of always make sure we were sharing and that we were being kind. And then she was quick to go and tell mother if there was something that wasn't quite lining up, and so normally that involved me uh, then being, you know, talked to and making sure that I was, you know, doing what was right. Jill wasn't necessarily a tattletale. I think she was more just trying to keep us accountable and make sure that we did what was right. As I got a little older and there were younger siblings, I was always trying to mother them and take care of them and play nurse. I just loved helping out. Through the years, she's always been the one that's just like patient with us and really kind and just like a buddy to all. Jill has a lot of hats that she wears in our family. What do you need to do to Jackson? Apologize? Initially, she was the one that you could depend on for an encouraging word and somebody to be there to play a game with you. Perfect. Good job, Haney. Good job. Other people love to be around her because she's like the ultimate best friend. Now in our family, too, I see that she's blossomed into a great mentor to younger ones. Two. She is an excellent cook. She does a lot of the food. She likes babysitting, like uh, taking care of all the younger ones. OK, I need Haney and Jenny over here. Jackson, you get all the blankets in the box. She's just so much fun. Always has something fun to like talk about and cool ideas of things we should do for sister time out. And yeah, we're really going to miss her when she's gone. <laughs> If you could think of one word to describe Jill, what would that word be? I would say loving. Delightful. Useful. Yeah. She's nice. It, yeah, energetic. One word to describe Jill would have to be bubbly. Giver. She's a giver. She loves to give. Bye! Sweet is the first thing that comes to mind. Sweet Jilly Muffin. Jill is deserting our buddy team and starting a new one. We are writing down recipes because we discovered recently that she doesn't know how to cook for two. Derek will probably be eating a lot of leftovers. What do you think Jill and Derek are looking forward to the most? Yeah, let me think the best way to say this here. <laughs> It's really crazy to think that Jill's getting married and we're already having bridal showers for her and things. It's, I cannot believe it's already here. We are writing down recipes for Jill because we discovered recently that she doesn't know how to cook for two. <laughs> Jill does not know how to cook for less than 20 people, even 10 people, so everybody brought recipes that um, consist for servings of just two to four people. Cooking for two people and cooking for 19 people is a lot different. I think Jill's going to have a hard time adjusting, and Derek will probably be eating a lot of leftovers.
can't believe that little Jilly Muffy is now getting married and going to start a family of her own. One of Jill's favorite things that she enjoys doing is spending time with her family. That's probably one of the top of the list things. Thank you, Daddy, too. <laughs> and she has a very close relationship with her sisters. My sisters and I are very close. We have grown up spending a lot of time together, and so our bond is very tight. We are doing Ginger's perm. Her hair's getting straight, so it's about time for her to have another perm. We did go through a perm phase where it wasn't just like perm for some added body. It was like perm. Yeah, our hair was like really frizzy, poofy, curly, and we would like pin it back or something. Well, I think it's fun to look like your best friends. And so I could see why, you know, they wanted them all to be the same. Jill and I, I guess, just ended up being thrown into doing most of the perming. So yeah, I guess we were kind of the perm queens. I think we're still a lot like that. It's just fun being sisters and being able to share both the good and the bad. Me and Jill get along really well because, like, ever since I was born, she's always taken care of me. Jill and Joy go way back. <laughs> before Joy was even born, when Jill realized that we were having another baby and she already was claiming that for her buddy. That was her buddy. That's right. Yeah. Originally, the buddy team started when Michelle and I had all these little children. So what we did is we matched up one of the younger ones with one of the older ones. So when we went out and about, we wouldn't lose the younger ones. And it really made it kind of like an efficient team that we go places and go through crowds and keep everybody together. Jill's buddy team is Joy, James, and Jennifer. Joy and James, why don't y'all look for vinegar? Well, Jill and Joy's doing a lot of fun things with her buddies. They enjoy making cookies and baking, and they've even made pickles together. We need to cut them, so James, you go get the cutting board and a knife. You can, that can be your job. We made pickles together as a buddy team, and it was something fun. Just our family loves pickles, and so just fun activity to do together. Jill is deserting our buddy team <laughs> and starting a new one. <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll still let her in when she comes and visits, but That's you know, deserted. she's starting one with Derek, and maybe if she has kids in the future. So she'll have all of them, so. <laughs> sadly. Then I'll just call on my buddy team and recruit y'all to come help with the <laughs> new team. <laughs> Since y'all know how it's done. <laughs> Who do you think would be the best leader for Jill's buddy team now that she's getting married? I think Joy would be the best leader for the buddy team. Um, now that Jill's leaving, um, they're going to need, you know, that other person to kind of keep their team going. I think John would be a good buddy team leader for their team because he doesn't actually have a buddy team. I think well, he's not in a buddy team at all. And he don't have a lady. <laughs> the best buddy leader in the team, I guess, now would be Joy because Joel's getting married. I'm going to have to take over the buddy team, and I think she's trying to do pretty well. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to do half as good as she did. I had been through first responder training through our local fire department. When I heard Jason screams, it was a pretty terrifying sound. Well, Jill was the first one to find Jason. There he was laying in this dark place in a pool of blood. Jill instantly put her first responder skills into action. I cannot believe we are only one week away from giving Jill away to Derek at her wedding day. I can't believe it. Penny, did you find the paper yet? Jill has really always had a servant's heart. She is very giving, so I think she'll always give half of her cookie to someone. Or, you know, when she was little, I mean, she was just giving and loving and helping wherever she could, and that's kind of her personality. A servant's heart really means that you realize that life isn't just about you. It's really about you find joy from serving others. When we go to Central America, 
We do a lot of different things. We usually go around Christmas time about every year. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. We will take Christmas gifts and visit different villages. <laughs> We do make friends with the locals. The more we visit there, you recognize faces, and it's pretty easy to bond with them very quickly. Yeah, we're friends. Um, she's helped me speak better Spanish. <laughs> One time in particular, I made a really close friend, Enya. Jill is a very sensitive person. She makes connections and bonds with people, and so going on these missions trips, she would just fall in love with them, and then leaving is the hardest thing. She was the most emotional when times came to say goodbye, but she always had that hope that next year she'd be back. Jill, John, and I decided to get first responder training because we were joining our local fire department, and we just wanted more medical skills and just knowing how to respond efficiently and properly. Don't worry. We'll be there with you. We'll make sure that you're okay. I'm really glad that I had that training. Just being able to respond to emergency situations, it's really helpful. A few years ago, Jason fell into an orchestra pit at a church in Atlanta, Georgia. He had been playing hide and seek with one of our cousins and didn't realize that it was a false wall. It was just a curtain there. So when he leaned up against what he thought was a wall, he fell beneath the orchestra pit. <laughs> I fell down and I think I hit my face. I don't really know because it was just happened so fast. When I heard Jason's screams, it was a pretty terrifying sound. Well, Jill was the first one to find Jason. And there he was laying in this dark place in a pool of blood. Jill instantly put her first responder skills into action. You want me to switch and Right on that side of your No. He's fine. He's fine. I was scared. I was crying. I thought Jason was, was going to die. So I said, I got on the bed and I was like, don't let him die. Jill was really good in this situation. She came down there, she was calm. She was just like, Jason, don't move because you know, you might have a broken neck and we don't want you to get hurt. She's just very calm and just like, but she knew what to do. So she was doing what she needed to do. I figure Jill will always help other people. And you know, that picture may change as far as what and who and how, but along life's way, I figure Jill will always be having that servant's heart and serving and loving other people. What do you think Jill and Derek are looking forward to the most? Yeah, let me think the best way to say this here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the honeymoon. They're looking forward, of course, to their vows, but they're looking forward to just being alone, being on a honeymoon, and just having a time alone. I think just getting to be together all the time and not even having to have chaperones anymore. I'm really excited about getting married. <laughs> Saying the vows. I think even just seeing how the ceremony, just everything, just dreaming about it, and then now it's here. I'm sure Jill's looking forward to the wedding and all the, the uh, ceremony and all that. And I'm sure Derek's looking forward to after the wedding. <laughs> I think that midwifery is like the perfect fit for Jill because she can stay calm and be able to just be there for people. Jesus. And also she loves babies. We are having a bridal shower for Jill, and many of the babies that she has helped delivered will be at this event. It was a year and a half ago whenever Jill delivered Ethne, <laughs> and she she was such a help. We're so thankful. She's just a big part of my life because of my son, and looking back on the memories of being pregnant with him, and then having him, and just the care afterwards just she's just been a huge part of our life I think these times are just a time to show um, your support and, and love for somebody that has been such an integral part in your family and your family growing and I wouldn't have missed it for the world
Some of the later pregnancies that Michelle had, Michelle and I talked about, you know, should we allow the older girls to actually be in the birthing room when Michelle delivers? And we really thought that this would be a great experience for the girls. For them to actually be in there and see like Jackson and Johanna be born and some of the other ones, it was really an amazing experience. When we found out we were expecting our 19th child, we were so excited. Hey, is this Josh? <laughs> Wanted to let you guys know we're expecting. Is another little baby brother or sister? No way. Wow. 19 kids and counting. <laughs> no way. But then about 24 to 25 weeks into the pregnancy, Michelle ended up having preeclampsia. Hi. And she got deathly sick. This situation is fixing to change our lives. Forever. But, uh, you know, we praise God when all the good things are happening. And we're going to praise God even to this difficult situation. Josie ended up being born at 25 and a half weeks gestation. She only weighed one pound, six ounces. We didn't know if she was going to live or die. And our whole family, we were very fragile. Hey guys, little Josie is perfect and beautiful in every way. Just a little small. Jill was somebody that was just so emotionally touched by this situation, but yet she would encourage other people that we can get through this, and we would pray for our little baby. Josie was so tiny and so fragile. Just the joy of getting to hold her would make some people scared more than joyful because they were so afraid because she was so tiny. But Jill, she just snatched that baby and she was like, I'm going to help take care of her. You know, I'm going to, whatever she needs, I'm here, you know. And so I think it's just her personality is, just loves those babies, loves helping however she can. She loves this thing. I think Jan and I bonded a lot with Josie, just the trying to keep an eye on everything. By Jill being able to, to hold and love on and get to help take care of Josie, it really just made a close relationship for them. I mean, she and Josie are best friends, and, and it started way back then. It has been a miracle watching Josie grow from such a tiny little baby, micro preemie, something else, my play. to a healthy and strong little girl <laughs> with an attitude. I'm going to come clean with them. No, that's sweet of you, but you get to do this right now. From there, Jill just seemed to take a real interest in birth and delivery. Midwifery has really become something that I've enjoyed and I think just being able to show compassion to those who are in probably the most pain in their life. And really getting to um, just be there for these mamas and families really um, throughout their pregnancy and then in the labor and birth and then postpartum as well. And so you really connect with them. Midwifery is like the perfect fit for Jill because she can stay calm and be able to just be there for people and also she loves babies. She's so cute. Is it consistent like three to five minutes? Yeah, they're about they're right now they're three to five minutes apart and they hold for about one to one and a half minutes. Jill had just started uh, doing midwifery training and sort of learning more about births when Anna and I found out that we were expecting our first. It was our first child. We didn't know really what we wanted, and so Josh and I were able to talk about, you know, do we feel comfortable with family coming? But we really would like for Jill to be there because we know that she's been able to help a lot of other people. Jill and my mom were actually out of town at that time, and so it was literally just within moments we notified them. We said, look, we're here, and they literally jumped on, and they were like, they flew in and got in just in time. Push, baby, push. <sighs> oh, I remember with Mackenzie's labor, once mom and Jill got there, it was just like, okay, we can have a baby now. It's going to be okay. And they were just able to help in, in the final few minutes of labor, and 
They did amazing. Michael's labor and delivery is not one that I really like to remember. It was very difficult. He's good. He's, 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 he's doing great. He's great. Jill was just there as a constant encouragement hour after hour. And I think out of everyone that was there, Jill just stayed so positive and was just like, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. And she was just there to encourage me, and that meant a lot. Michael's birth was longer than Anna expected, but she did really well. It was really special to be there for that birth. And then Marcus's birth was beautiful. Hey, Jesus. I think Anna was really grateful that it was a lot faster than Michael's birth. <laughs> you get the whole thing too. I'm like, Jesus. How does Jill help mommies when they um, have babies? She likes helps them because she really loves babies, and so she wanted to be a baby uh, um, helper, so she gets babies out of all the time. And she babysits babies. She does all different kinds of with babies. How's it going? Hey, going good. I thought it's the kind of guy that we're looking for. I think I'm in love with somebody I've never met. I saw Jill for the first time, I thought, wow, she's more beautiful in person than even when we were video conferencing. Jill! Good to see you. I can't believe you're here. From the time our daughters are small, we've really prayed that the Lord would bring the one he has for them in his timing. We have talked a lot, a lot with Jill, not just Jill, with all of our children about their future spouse. Hello, I'm Jill Duggar. She was looking for that person that would kind of help balance her out in her life. My name is Derek Dillard. I'm 25 and I'm from Rogers, Arkansas. My parents are Kathy Dillard and the late Rick Dillard. Derek was born March 9th of 1989. He was 10 days late. He was supposed to be here February 28th. My childhood was great. I had wonderful godly parents and just one brother and we spent a lot of time together growing up because he was my only sibling, so if we wanted someone to play with and no one was around, then we hung out with each other. I was uh, your stereotypical little brother. I followed him around and kind of watched what he did and obviously looked up to him, being my big brother. For the most part, Derek and I got along, but we were your typical brothers. We had our, our moments. His dad was on the police department at the time, so he worked nights. It was great for the boys because they got to spend their afternoon and evenings with Rick. So he loved taking care of them, and and uh, they loved spending time with him too. So I lost my dad my first year in college, and it was very unexpected. He went to sleep one night, and he didn't wake up the next morning. I really knew that God was in control and just leaned on my faith in him to really strengthen me. and because I knew that was the only place that I could gain true strength. Derek was involved in church all the way through college and obviously went to the mission field after college. So I reached out to Jim Bob because I knew their family was very involved in missions. I knew that he had daughters, but at the time I was just seeking a prayer partner. When he left for Nepal, the last thing he did when I was taking him to the airport was give me um, one of his cards to send a Jim Bob. From the very first conversation with Derek Dillard, I thought, you know, this is really a neat guy, somebody that loves the Lord, and you know, this is the kind of guy that we're looking for, somebody with a ministry mindset and somebody that is selfless. Jim Bob and I talked for about a year and a half before he introduced me to Jill. When we first started talking, I thought, wow, this girl is pretty great. Like, she has a solid faith and she's got a great head on her shoulders. She knows what she wants. She just thought it'd be really great to get to know her better. I guess we'll be in on your conversation. Yep. Yeah. My dad, he doesn't bring up guys to us. Um, so Derek was the first guy that he's just like kept mentioning. Hey, Jill. How's it going? Hey, going good. How are you? I didn't think marriage. At first, I was just like, Pops, like, 
that's great. You know, I just try to be nice. Like, yeah, that's really, that's really sweet of you. Like, I thought it was really sweet that my dad's like looking out for me, you know? So I guess you're like a day ahead of me there. Wait, you're like uh, 10 hours and 45 minutes, right? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> At first, Jill was very guarded in this relationship, and she didn't really know if she wanted to pursue this relationship with Derek or not. But as she got to know him, she really started opening up her heart and seeing his heart, and she really fell in love with him. Well, it's been great talking with you. Talk to you as soon. Enjoy. <laughs> Bye, Jill. Bye. <laughs> I really wanted to go and meet Derek, so then I went and asked my parents, well, I think I'm in love with somebody I've never met. I was wondering if maybe we could plan a trip to go visit him in Kathmandu, Nepal. Getting to meet Derek where he was working was really a good idea. I think that was a very mature step in the relationship to really solidify, is this really who I think he is and am I Seriously considering moving forward in this relationship, I really want to know. Why don't we see if there's a week or two that Jill and I could fly over there and meet this guy. Were you at all nervous that it might not work out if she went over there? Yeah, I think I had that concern because I think it's very possible that it might not be meant to be. It's really a leap of faith, especially in this day and age, to meet each other over 8,000 miles having never met before. I was a little surprised when I found out Jill was going to Nepal to meet Derek. I thought that was very interesting to have her and, and Jim Bob travel to the other side of the world. Derek! Jill! Good to see you. I can't believe you're here. So when I saw Jill for the first time, I thought, wow, she's more beautiful in person than even when we were video conferencing and enjoyed getting to give her a side hug and, and I had some flowers there I wanted to give her. Oh, hey, good to meet you, man. Can't believe you guys are here. Hey, we made it. Yeah, so good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Some of my favorite moments on the Nepal trip would have been probably just like, well, really just overall getting to spend time with Derek and having my dad there with me really Really, like, that was huge for this support. We never did call it courtship, but I would talk to them every so often about, you know, as their friends began dating, and I would point out to them, you know, how it could be a painful process, not to mention expensive and time-consuming, when you're, you know, going from one girl to the next. Wouldn't it make sense to wait until you're in a position to really get serious in a relationship and maybe get married and, and then put the time into it. You want to come with me? I just wanted to ask you something real quick. I wondered if Derek was going to ask me before we left Nepal. I did have something I wanted to ask you. Um, if it's all right with you, um, I'm interested in starting an official courtship, so. <laughs> so would yeah, you be that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I think Derek was a little nervous whenever he asked to court me. Although we had been talking a lot long distance, we were still getting to know each other. And so, yeah, I think he was more nervous when he asked to court. <laughs> is that That's true? true? Is that yeah, true? <laughs> that is true. Um, these next two months are the longest two months I've had in a long time, so it's going to be me hard too. to. <laughs> yeah. It was very hard to, to leave each other. Like whenever she went back to the States, I knew that was a good sign that we enjoyed being around each other. What is a first kiss? Ew. <laughs> Why did you say that? Because it's called kissing. Having been uh, in that situation before, I have to say that, you know, that's that's a pretty awesome thing. And, and to share it in front of your closest family and friends, uh, even though it's kind of thousands of them, um, is it's a pretty awesome thing. When I get big and get married, I will um, get my first ring, my first kiss, and yep. Don't make your guests feel awkward at your wedding, you know. Short and sweet, to the point, don't miss. That's another one. I'm not nervous about the first kiss. I'm not nervous about the first kiss. 
when he was growing up. I never thought that he would marry into a family with 19 kids. <laughs> they ended up giving themselves a frontal hug. My alarm went off. <laughs> She's sitting on the couch, and these moms are all putting their babies in there. <laughs> I could not wait for the end of that 60 days to come around. It was really amazing seeing each other for the first time after being away for two months. I mean, that was a really long time, or at least it seemed like it. Forever. Yeah. I don't know, there's just something about getting to see each other face to face again. So I knew when I turned around the corner that. I was like, run, run, run. <laughs> Can't cross the line. <laughs> They ended up giving themselves a frontal hug, and I said, hey, maybe cross the line there. <laughs> My alarm went off. I think intentions were to do a side hug, but I think they both were caught off guard. We're both the doing the opposite side. Shoulder. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work out. I think exactly. my parents were understanding, though. Once I returned back to the States, after two months, I proposed to Jill. When he was growing up, I never thought that he would marry into a family with 19 kids. So the proposal took a lot of planning, um, had a lot of time to think about it. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? You guys like music? I do. Yeah. Y'all re reminded me of a song I wrote. You want to hear it? Hey, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, you grew up about 30, short minutes down the street. But we had to go 8,000 miles away to meet. I'm not sure what the Lord was thinking, taking us all the way to Kathmandu. But I know he was thinking of me when he made you. Jill is really good at connecting the dots, and she doesn't like surprises as much. So I wanted to kind of throw off a little bit, but not too much. But I think she was definitely expecting it whenever I proposed to her. I couldn't imagine spending my life without you. It would be an honor to serve God with you for the rest of my life. Would you marry me? Yes, totally. <gasps> when Jill said yes, it just felt surreal. I was like, wow, like, we're getting married. I have a fiance now. This is great. And we held hands for the first time. And just thought, wow, there's, this is pretty awesome. Derek did amazing. The proposal was out of this world. I do still listen to my song, um, and Derek will sing it to me sometimes, so that's even better. Now, almost three months later, I can't believe we're finally getting married. Vanessa hosted a bridal shower for me, and it was so sweet of her. It was amazing. I didn't really realize how many births she had been at and how many babies there were that she had been there assisting their births. There might have been 40 or 50 babies there at this party. And that was probably only maybe a fourth of the babies that she's helped deliver. Hey there. Hey, sunshine. Hi. It is so much fun to see all the mothers and babies that I've either helped during the pregnancy or the birth and just getting to see all of them at one time is just so much fun. Can somebody get Jill? All the moms said, well, can you get a picture of my baby? Can you get a picture of my baby? She's like, let's do a big group photo. So she's sitting on the couch, and these moms are all putting their babies in there and then holding them up behind the couch, and half the kids are screaming. <laughs> The noise level was like through the roof. It was really comical. I didn't count how many babies there were, but I know there were a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of baby noises going on, crying, cooing, and once one starts, they all start. Emily. is so sweet. Definitely, that is a statement about who Jill is. Just seeing her beaming 
with all of those babies and those mamas that you're setting those babies over there. She just loves, loves people, babies, relationships. It's just chill. It is really hard to believe that in just one week I'm getting married. My hopes. There'll be a baby shower before long. I'm gonna miss Jill when she moves out of the house. Mm -hmm. Jill's gonna be married. Like, think about how much We're it's not gonna ready change. For this. We will miss Jill a lot when she moves out of the house. We're gonna miss Jill a lot. Jill has always been my best friend, and I'm definitely going to miss her. As Mama, I'm thrilled that my little Jilly Muffin has grown up, and now she's this beautiful. God fearing young woman, and I'm so thrilled for her that she is getting married. Next time on 19 Kids and Counting. Nervous? <laughs> yeah, really nervous. Just a lot to get done, but it's going to happen whether we get everything done or not. Ah! Jill will be the first daughter to get married. You're not losing a sister, you're gaining a brother. I don't want her to get married. Do I have to give you away? Where's <laughs> <laughs> your tissues? It's your time. This is actually happening. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. This is her wedding day.